Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. I just um, was playing with my makeup today and on a whim decided to swatch a bunch of blushes and wanted to jump on here and actually film a top 10 spring blush video. I did one of these in the winter time. I did one of these like a month or two back. So I'll link that up in the cards. I thought I would actually do another one with my top spring blushes. I'm gonna do 10 like I did last time and I am going to try to rank them. This was really hard for me to rank first of all because spring came but we can't go out so i'll be honest unless i am filming something for youtube or filming something for my music school because i'm doing some online challenges for all of our students i'm not really wearing makeup just around the house i've played with the makeup a little bit here and there but definitely not enough so i feel like even though i remember a lot of these blushes from my previous years i would have loved of course a chance to wear all of these again just to make sure my ranking order still holds true from what I remember in the past but we're just gonna go with what my instincts told me what my gut told me and if things change you know next time I actually do get a chance to go through all of these blushes then I can always film an updated video sometime in the future if need be I'm gonna stop blabbering I'd like this video for once to be really short and really quick and really to the point so if you'd like to see my top 10 favorite spring blushes for 2020 then please just keep on watching Okay, I've swatched them all in advance so I can see the colors as we go to make this faster. You can even see like my fingers are still stained, but I'm just gonna uh, jump straight in. In number 10 spot, I have this blush trio from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I picked this up when they went on clearance some time back and I specifically love this color right here for this time of the year and it is called Rose. It's a very interesting color. It's like a dusty color, so it's a rose with a little bit of a dustiness to it but at the same time I see like a hint an absolute hint hint of something a little more I don't want to say orange because definitely it's not I don't even know how to describe this color because in person it is just such an interesting color to me but on my hand it's this one right here and I don't know if you guys can see like some of these other ones that you're about to see they have more of a pink to them this one is sort of in between a pink and already slightly more corals more apricot type shade and you will notice a trend definitely my pink and corals and apricots start coming out in the spring and in the summer I lean even more towards apricot nude sort of colors and then in the fall time I'm still into the really tangerine orangey types but my pinks and mauves start to come back I remember a lot of people not really liking the formula which is why I think these didn't do so well I don't actually think there's anything wrong with this formula it seems to come across really nice on my cheeks when I use it and maybe because I'm dry I don't have as big of a problem with blushes lasting on me as I think a lot of oily people do. Yes, of course, certain blushes even on me disappear, but in general, I'm pretty lucky that way. In the ninth spot, I have a blush that I haven't used too much yet, which is why it's in the number nine spot. Although I do have to say I love the formula, so I have a feeling in the future this blush might creep up to a higher spot. This is a little sample size of the Becca uh, Luminous Blush in Camellia. I really, really really like this blush. This blush has this perfect sheen to it. It's this one right here. It's definitely a lighter color. It's lighter and brighter at the same time. It's uh, more of a pink than the ABH one. And of course, the ABH one is like a satin, matte satin formula, whereas this is definitely a luminous formula. And I really, really have been enjoying luminous blushes quite a lot. So yeah, I would like to start pulling for this one a bit more. Number eight is a blush from Laura Geller. It's a baked gelato vivid swirl blush. And this is the color Rose Water. That's is solid of these I've always thought was just so so pretty this one is even more pink and even more bright this one really pops a punch as you can see and compared to these other two this one's a bit darker but really really fun I think maybe this one would be good for those of you who have medium skin tone obviously I am pale as a ghost so every 
everything shows up on me if anything too much but i think this could work for a medium skin tone i honestly think the abh ones might work too i don't know if they still make these trios but these seem to be quite pigmented and of course if you have any and you are of a darker skin color then please let me know what blushes work for you and which don't because i would like to become a bit more educated about that i would think the becca would maybe work as almost like a blush topper or a highlight on some deeper skin tones but again let me know because i am not so sure but yeah i really really enjoy the laura geller uh baked gelato swirl formula it's much more dense like even when you swatch it and uh when you try to swatch it on your hand it doesn't apply as smooth as buttery but on the cheeks it applies just beautifully so this is one of those blushes i wouldn't necessarily judge only by the swatch we're up to number seven and that's actually the blush i have on my cheeks today this is an urban decay blush i'm sorry i'm probably blinding you with this very shiny packaging there's a few blushes coming up with shiny packaging so you're probably going to see tons of fingerprints and get blinded but these are their afterglow eight hour powder blushes they've discontinued these unfortunately if you saw my winter blush video you probably will remember that one of these blushes just in a different color was very high up on my list and this one is in the color score now what i've always wondered about this blush is the sticker is a lot more orange whereas the actual blush is a lot more coral and i don't know why that is i don't know if i got a wrong blush or if that's how they were to begin with obviously by now i can't go into a store and check they are a discontinued b no one's going anywhere so i just have to assume that they didn't do a very good job of labeling these but yeah the one i have is in the color score as i mentioned it is what i have on my cheeks today as my blush and it is this one at the end right here i really enjoyed this blush mine is starting to dry out i can feel it but i still would like to keep using it for as long as i can until it doesn't i guess give me any pigment anymore i did have to build my blush up today and i really do think it's just because of age but it's still not going anywhere i really like this blush this one is as i said already more coral it still has that pink to it this is already getting into the coral and more orangey brown sort of side of my blushes and then we're about to get into more of that so speaking of that in number six spot i have a wet and wild blush this one is their color icon blush in apricot in the middle do they still make these does anybody know? I think they do, but I'm not so sure. This one is an apricot in the middle, and I really like this blush. It's this one. Uh, oh no, sorry. It's this one right here. So this is apricot in the middle. You can see it's like a deep apricot rusty color a little bit. So this is something I usually start wearing in the spring, and it takes me all the way through the fall. I really, really like this blush, and I use it for a good half of the year at least. It has a little bit of a sheen to it, so it's not definitely a flat matte, but it's also not luminous. It's not a shiny blush, so it's kind of like a satin. These are really inexpensive. I have two of these. I have this one and Rosé Champagne or Champagne Rosé, something like that. That is a fantastic color as well, but I'm really looking forward to busting this blush back out. I haven't used it yet this season, but in the past couple of years, I've loved using that. Okay, we're getting into the top five now. Told you guys, we were gonna knock these out today. This was gonna be fast. I'm not fooling around. I want to try to finally learn how to do shorter videos. This is my Becker Afterglow Sunset Palette. They also had an original Afterglow palette, which I used to own. And it's interesting because I've been watching Kelly Gooch and she's been panning uh, some colors from there this year. And it made me realize what a fantastic palette that was. And I have no idea why I got rid of it. I decluttered it a couple of years back. Now Kelly's videos are making me want it again. I don't believe it's available anymore. I think those were limited edition palettes. And either way, I wouldn't be buying it right now anyways. Cause I'm gonna say it with me year long no buy but i do still have the afterglow sunset palette this one i picked up last year i believe at tg maxx or marshall's this like the other afterglow palette comes with five shades in case you guys are curious this has the highlighter in crystal gold and champagne pop so that's crystal gold and that's champagne pop it has the bronzer in capri coast right here in the center and then it has the mineral blush that we're about to talk about which is the one in flower child and the luminous blush in 
Halloween Snapdragon. This kind of has these three colors in the center are sort of the heavy hitters of Becca. I feel like these are some of the top products between Champagne Pop, Capri Coast, and Flower Child. And that's why I got this palette. I kind of wanted to make sure I have all of those fan favorites. The blush in my fifth spot is Flower Child and it's right here in the center of this bottom row. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. This is like a true coral and I really, really have been enjoying it since I got this palette last year, but I would like to give it more love this year. But even so, it's already reached a top five for me. Number four is going to have to go to one of my ambient lighting blushes from Hourglass. These are the three colors I own. I have Luminous Flush, Incandescent Electra, and Nude Exposure. And Incandescent Electra, which is the center one, is the one that I especially love in the springtime. So let me show you that on my hand. That's this one right here. It's a coral, but because these blushes from Hourglass also have their ambient lighting powders mixed in with the blush color, I find these to be just the right amount of pigment. They're not overbearing for my skin tone. I would again not know exactly how one with a deeper skin tone would feel about these blushes, but I really like it because you can see in comparison to all of these pretty much, this one has a bit of that lighter coral flush to it, and I really enjoy that. That's a great blush. One of my favorites obviously. My fourth favorite, at least today. Who knows? Tomorrow, this might all change. Okay, top three. This is the Love Flush palette. No longer available. I don't even think the blushes are available anymore, but this was a little palette they came out with from Too Faced. Sorry, I didn't even mention that. This was a little palette Too Faced came out with, with all of the Love Flush blushes available at that time. I especially love Love Hangover for the springtime. So that one is right here, right here at the end so so bright and so pigmented and so smooth even though this is an older palette but this palette's not going anywhere yet i love using it i love this color it's a coral probably the brightest coral pink out of all of these with the exception of maybe the laura geller blush i really enjoy that bright bright exciting vibrant color Second spot is one of my Clinique Cheek Pop blushes. I have three, I love all of them. This one is in Pink Honey Pop, and it's this center shade. It's probably the most nude of all the colors that I'm showing you guys today, but it's not like a nude nude. It definitely has a bit of a tangerine warmness to it. So again, right there, really pretty. Really love this formula. This is probably my favorite formula out, out of all the blushes I'm showing you today. And the reason for why in number one spot, we have Tarte's Party Blush, which a lot of people on YouTube know and love, is because I use it most often. It's just so compact, it's so light, it's just so easy to throw in on the go, you know, for when we're on the go, which is not right now, that this blush just gets the most use from me during the warm weather months. So that's probably the only reason this blush won out a bunch of these other ones. There are definitely other blushes here that I prefer the formula of. As I mentioned, Cheek Pop is one of those. I really love the Hourglass blushes. I enjoy all of these, of course, but this is just such a classic by now, I feel like, and I definitely use it a lot. And it's this one. Can you guys see? It's this one on the end. Sorry, I didn't do a very good job swatching these last three. So it's the bottom one. That's it. I hope you like this. Those were my top 10 spring blushes. I'd love to hear what are yours. And I'd love it if you would consider subscribing, if you would consider liking this video and commenting on it. It would help a great deal. Every little interaction that you do, every little comment and like really helps all the YouTubers that you know and love because YouTube picks up on that and starts pushing out those videos and recommending them a little more often. So please do subscribe subscribe. I hit that notification bell if you want to know whenever I post a video. And I thank you guys all so much for stopping by and spending a few minutes of your day with me today. I hope that you stay safe and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye! Finger. This is probably blinding you guys. And we have such wind today. Can you hear that? <laughs>